This week on Slash and Burn, we're talking about two brothers. Their mom isn't in the picture, and their dad is kind of an absentee asshole. But because of him, their legacy sets them on a road of amazing adventures and colorful characters. Their names are Dean and... Sam. Hank. That's right. This week, we are talking about the Venture Brothers. <laughs> I researched wrong. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, I, I, I looked up Supernatural. Mm. I must have misunderstood. I fucking always get yeah. those guys backwards. <laughs> Shit. Um, okay, uh, I'll be back in a couple hours. <laughs> Here at the place, the greatest place, for erotic fan fiction. Kira and Steve will give you what you need to satiate your deepest fantasies. Here is the fan fiction veteran. Steve is the lovable noob. The Hulker is unflappable. When not safe for work comes into play, it's assumed. Welcome to the Slash and Burn Podcast. All right, um. Keeping on the OC train. I love that train. It's my favorite train. Uh, another painting that my wife wanted to see, I don't think necessarily because it does anything for her sexually, but I guess I might be wrong, is Death with Anybody. <laughs> now, Death in this show is a character played by a very old man. Uh, he's portrayed as basically omnipotent. But you need to bribe him with fast food most of the time to make him do things. I understand where he's coming from. So, uh, of course, I found a couple of Death and OC fix. So the first one was pretty good. It hit all the notes that I was expecting, but then it stopped before it actually got to boning. Uh, so I just want to pull a couple of points from uh, O Death. That's O, comma, Death. By Nooners, with a Z. N O O N E R Z 455 on fanfiction.net. Not 420. Nope, not 420. Are you sure? It's about when you're coming down from it, I guess, 25 minutes later, maybe, depending on how much. Um, <laughs> and it's called Oh it's Death. 30 minutes later. 35 minutes later, Steve. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't use the weed. For reasons that I probably talked about on the podcast I'm before. I'm just saying math. 420. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. I don't do math when I'm not on the clock for reasons that I probably talked about on the podcast. <laughs> um. <laughs> but these are the things that I picked out from our OC uh, from this story. Um, first, her name is confusingly spelled or pronounced. I'm not sure, but it's spelled J-A-C-Y, I'm sorry, J-A-C-L-Y-N, which could be Jacelyn, Jocelyn, Jacqueline, Jacqueline. It could be any one of those. I'm going to go with Jacelyn. That's how I thought it at first, too. And then one of the Winchester boys <laughs> called her Jackie, and I was like, oh, that's probably not the way she wants you to say that. But I think that fits in pretty well. She's totally just one of the guys. She, much like your OC in the last story. She's not like other girls. She's not technically related to the Winchesters, but she, uh, her dad was friends with their dad, and they've been hunting together since they were kids. See, and now the three of them just run together. To, 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 to backtrack just a couple minutes to the thing you said about mm -hmm. how, no matter how cool you think you are, like, I just sneered when I said she's not like other girls, but like... Oh, no, that was a thing that you actively me, said. Yes. Would not have sneered at that. No. That's disgusting, past me. Stop and it. I think past me said that I was friends with you because mm -hmm. you were not like other mm -hmm. girls. Mm -hmm. Disgusting. <laughs> We were disgusting. You're disgusting. It's okay. Embrace it and move on. Just keep in mind that... As long as you keep growing as a person... History will always judge you as a monster. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> Just keep trying to do your best. And remember that everyone will think that you're shit after you're dead. Um, 
So she's totally just one of the guys. She's best friends with the two principal characters, of course. She gets all of the best zingers on them. You know how in the course of a normal episode, they, you know, Sam and Dean might like zing each other back and forth. You know what I mean? Like Dean might call Sam an egghead and like uh, Sam might call Dean uh, an idiot or whatever. She gets all of those uh, throughout all of their interactions. Um, she, I loved her already. We find out she will take any excuse to drink and she drinks Jack Daniels because again, she's just one of the guys. Uh, and she is definitely totally okay with accepting being Death's hostage while Sam and Dean borrow his scythe because that's the mission and the mission is more important than she is. Also, she probably wants his old man bone. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so I thought I'd bring that up next. In the supernatural world, death is played by an old man. Is he that old? I think he's probably at least mid to late 70s. I'm looking it up. What? Really? I'm looking it up. Please do. I'm trying. Your internet's slow. Um, I looked up the ages of a bunch, or not the ages, but the other roles of a bunch of different characters for this project, but I didn't look him up, actually. Species horseman. Wait, was he a, was he a species and horseman, or was he a horseman and species? His species <laughs> is horseman. Oh, it's okay. Never mind. I thought you were reading his acting credits. No, okay, no, I got gotcha. you. No. Okay. Although I like that better. <laughs> um... His real name is Julian Richings. Uh, he is 60. Holy shit, he, he looks old for 60. in 1956. Wow! So, okay. not that old. All right, I take it sir. back a little bit, but if you look at him, he looks pretty fucking old. I think he's supposed to. He's death. Right, so that's why I thought he was in his 70s. Anyway, she probably totally wants to bone down on this guy. But the story ends before the boning. Um, Sam and Dean want the scythe, his scythe, so that they can kill leviathans, who are apparently unkillable by all other means. That's so old news. I, right. I, I kind of, that was like season like eight or nine or something, right? Seven maybe even? Whatever. But so they want that, so they summon Death. Death is pissed off. He shows up, and he's like, well, maybe I could do it. And he like eats the Arby's you that Dean like bought for him or whatever. Slice bread with his face. Right. That's what I'm saying. He looks like a severely old dude. He doesn't. He just looks like he's got really strong bone structure. Right. As an old dude, he's an attractive old dude. He's still a very old dude. <laughs> anyway. Well, apparently he's not. Um, but so they want his scythe and he's like, maybe I could give up my scythe if you guys meet some conditions. Munch on Arby's bacon cheddar sandwich. Uh, and I relate to, to, to him on a deep level. <laughs> and so they're like, well, what do you mean? And she's like, and or rather he's like, uh, well, how about you stay with me for a while and we'll do some stuff and I will make sure that they don't ruin my scythe while you're with me. Because if they do, then they won't get you back. And she's like, no, guys, it's cool. Totally got this. And they're like, you're out of your mind. And she's like, no, 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 it's fine. Go take care of the Leviathans. Because she's totally team first and a badass. Um, but that story ends chapter three with her driving off in a car with death and we get no more resolution. So I found a different story with a different OC and the same death. And this one. I'm going to read some whole... I'm going to read only whole paragraphs here, but I'm not going to read every whole paragraph, because this is Wait, fucking long. Wait, so there's long. a second OC in the story? No, this is a completely different story. I found a different death slash OC oh, story, because oh, I wanted to get some boning in there. Okay, good. After I read three chapters of this and then got blue-balled, I wanted to find another one. <laughs> this one is called Deadly by by Chai Hayes, C-H-I... C-H-I-H-A-Y-E-S C-H-I H-A Y-E-S Chai he yes She Hayes Yes, on fanfiction.net It's called Deadly Now, we're 30 episodes in Let's figure we average Six Although it's probably slightly more Stories per episode um, So you figure 30 times six Is... 360 stories we've read by this point? 
more because sometimes we. <laughs> or have more. That's what I'm saying. I think wow. I think six is undershooting it a bit. We've read at least 360 stories for on this you, so far, dear listeners. For you, and I think this might be the most over the top, poetic, ridiculous description of sexual intercourse I that I have yet read on this podcast. Uh, so I'm just going to start reading it again. I'm not reading the whole thing. I'm jumping from paragraph to paragraph, but I'm trying to get the choicest bits. Keep in mind, this is a very old man with, <laughs> he looks older than he is. He is also deaf. So he's basically immortal. He's also got basically unlimited powers. Like how this guy isn't just deus ex machina to the entire series. I don't know. Because anytime they ask him to do anything, he's like, well, yeah, of course I could fucking do that. I think but, he just doesn't want to. Uh, basically, right. Um, he's like, not my problem. Yeah. Uh, his kiss was famous for a reason, as she could only think following an elongated experience with it firsthand as it delved into her soul like water in the cracks of stone, unable to be removed or ignored by any being in the universe one could only suspect. It was not overdone, nor difficult to cope with, but rather simplistic enough as to be enjoyable for the both of them throughout its lifespan. What? Kisses have lifespans now. I, 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 I've never had a kiss that's difficult <laughs> to cope with. What well, does that even mean? You'd never fuck death, I, I guess. A slight brush of the tongue, hands sliding around her waist, fingers gently scratching at his suit jacket, all sparked an undeniable passion that, regardless of whether or not true love was involved, would still result in ecstasy. He was death, after all. Surely the man knew tricks that no one else could pull off, more so even think of doing to their significant other. So, not only has he been doing this for eternity, so he's good as fuck at it, but this is the kind of stuff that you'd be like, I'm not going to do this to the mother of my child slash father of my child. I'm not even going to bother asking. <laughs> Tell me, the words left her lips like honey, a sigh against the near silence of heavy breathing and shuffling about. Gaze cast up to his, irises meeting those of a far darker hue. A question slipped before she could stop it. What are you going to do? Death's head tilted ever so slightly, almost as though he was debating on how to answer her inquiry in the correct fashion. Quite frankly, she couldn't care less about how he answered it. That seems like a bad question. Never ask a question that you don't A, know, or B, care about the answer to. All she wanted was his voice in her ear, laying out exactly what he would do, and how loud she would scream with pleasure at the act, as the act came to a close. There was a sort of mental pleasure that came with wordplay, one that had the power to stiffen and relax the body like waves on a shore, leave a woman's hips to rise in anticipation for her lover to push forward, as Delilah had already found herself doing now. No doubt that he felt against the tightening fabric beneath his belt, which she so desperately wanted to tear off and be rid of forever, for her dithering was becoming tedious." You look like you have some words to say. I, first of all, she said, I don't care how he answers this question, but this is exactly how I, I want, want him to answer, answer this, this question. question. Yes. Other than that, I'm just like floored by this wordplay. Well, not wordplay, but this worded. This, right, this verbosity. He leaned forward, thin lips brushing over the curve of her ear as he began to speak with such composure and equanimity that none that one could be pleasantly surprised. Make you mine. His voice was deep, somewhat hoarse when heard from such a close distance, yet mind-numbing all the same. Put a dent in your soul that will withstand the effects of time. Ooh. The words were somewhat nerve-wracking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're with her. I'm okay. into it. <laughs> the words were somewhat nerve-wracking, as a dent normally implied that something was to be penetrated so much as to cause damage and perhaps pain. However, I got a dent there in my was car because it was penetrated. No, I mean, no. Technically, no, I was banged up against. I'm gonna bang up against your soul real good. Uh, um, however, there was a sense of trust that overpowered said fear of the unknown and somewhat threatening. Fully aware that death was an honest man that, in a situation like this, would most likely take nothing from inflicting harm upon another. 
Of course, she couldn't be sure, but death by orgasm was most likely one of the best ways to pass on, much more than burning or drowning. <laughs> well, well, most of them are. It's, it's like eating French toast is pretty good, much less than shit or dirt. <laughs> like, what? That's, I think that's how I'm going to respond when people ask me how I like what I'm eating. It is good. Much better than literal feces. <laughs> uh, the w- <laughs> sorry. I'm she- like, is that a compliment or not? I can't tell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is you're not the worst thing I could imagine tasting. <laughs> Within that set is the best thing I've ever tasted, so... Uh, She arched her back, breasts now pressing against his chest just enough to elicit a sweet sigh from her mouth. It was not excessive, the note drawing out for far longer than it should have in hopes of getting his attention. No. Any sounds she made were real and natural, unavoidable, no matter how much she tried to keep her mouth shut and her body still while subject to his control. Please. A timid hand drifted down his back, skin surprisingly hot considering that most expected him... Excuse me. <laughs> to be somewhat deceased or lifeless. <laughs> somewhat deceased, I think, is also somewhat a pretty deceased. good shirt. It's like a little pregnant. <laughs> right. <laughs> you either right, are yeah. or you aren't. <laughs> or, as the song said, ice cold. I don't know what song <laughs> exactly to which she's referring. Perhaps it wasn't so much a negative icy cold that swept over her as a pose to a positive one, sending shivers across the spine and causing the jaw to tremble lightly in contentment. The way he worked her body was sedulous, which I don't even think is a word, but please check me. Uh, spell this for me. S-E-D-U-L-O-U-S. Showing dedication and diligence. Yes, it is a word. Hey, I learned something today. Me too. Welcome. You I can, know a lot of words. I don't know this one. You can. I, have the I, best I also know a lot of words. I. She's laughing because I told her that my syntax was unassailable, or that she <laughs> couldn't question my syntax. Oh, my syntax is perfect. I told her the other day, and she laughed at me. But it is. I may fuck up words occasionally, but my syntax <laughs> is unassailable. Uh, anyway, it was seditious, or. Nope, not seditious. <laughs> Sedulous. Never heard that word before either. Intricate. So much so that Delilah struggled to control her own movements while beneath him, which was erotic in its own special and unique way. I would also like special erotic in a special and unique way as a t-shirt. Dude, that would be the best I think shirt. that'd be a really good shirt. That would be like the best tagline for this show. <laughs> <laughs> it would be pretty good, yeah. So there we go for our editor to hear it one more time. Uh, erotic. <laughs> I'm just going back to the Simpsons. Erotic. Um, or was that family get crushed? I don't even fucking remember. Um, erotic in its own special and unique way. Revealing pleasure that she didn't even know existed. Her hand would have reached down to grip him gently if it weren't for the little stunt he pulled just then, moving to angle his hips upward before practically slamming back in, force amplified due to the change in position. Mouth agape, though not producing any sound, she found that her senses had been jolted to life, zapped with a shock of electricity that allowed them to perform ten times as well. Wow. Death was sure to have known some tricks, and it appeared that he had just used one of them on her. He had Delilah filled completely, walls stretching farther than any woman would come to believe her body could take without breaking in two from the legs up. Whoa. It wasn't so much physical size that played a part on and said feeling as opposite to sheer power as there was no doubt that he was adding a little kick with every thrust, which is my signature move, by the way. Every time (laughs) I'm just like, like out to the side. Like a horse. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> okay, they got the reaction I wanted. I'm satisfied. You were about to say. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the kick got gotcha. you. <laughs> Penetrating deeper than bodily means would allow, though with a certain grace and fluidity that removed any sense of raunchiness about the act. Okay, so she's been stretched 
pushed to her limits, but it's not a size thing. It's a... It's a power thing. So, he, he's literally, like, throbbing with... <laughs> yes, it's like, thunk, thunk. Yeah, like, just expanding to three times its size on every... I, I don't know. Either that or it's, like, a spiritual power. But she said where her she's walls like, are being stretched. So that by means... spiritual power, maybe? <laughs> I don't think... You don't know. I don't think. I'm pretty sure spiritual power doesn't manifest itself in a physical widening. I mean, clearly it does. I mean, she just said not as a physical thing. All right. So how tiny do you think his dick actually is? Because let's be fair. If I had the power to make my <laughs> dick feel as big as I wanted it to, with my key or whatever. <laughs> Then I probably wouldn't have to worry too much about how big it actually right, was. Right, right, right. I mean, initially, but I guess, like, did she was not looking at his bits when he penetrated her? No, so I don't think it ever actually, said that. If she never right. actually saw right. them, yeah, no. I mean, because if she was, like, you would want it to look impressive because otherwise you're not right. going to get a whole, she'd be like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> but, right. like. Yeah. But that's some David Blaine shit where you're like, look at my tiny penis. Whoa, I'm filling you up so much you're going to explode. <laughs> Mind freak. <laughs> the, uh, p- pussy freak. <laughs> Another good t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was art. Streaks of color on a blank canvas that came together and created a masterpiece. Not just a cheap good time that any woman could catch on a street corner if she so much as asked. Well, that's offensive. (laughs) I thought you'd say that, and I don't disagree. One of the most common phrases included the assumption that an older man could bring far more pleasure to a woman than a good-looking stud fresh out of university. I know that's one of the things that I heard the most growing up from both teachers and authority figures. An older man can bring far more pleasure to a woman than a good-looking stud straight out of university. You know, I had it tattooed on my upper arm, in fact. That's really In long. Chinese, in Cantonese characters. That's, that's really long for a, you know, a colloquial a, phrase. A, a common yeah. phrase, yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> and in this particular case, she couldn't help but agree more. To call death an old man was an understatement. Ancient, not even remotely close. However, with that age brought a certain sense of experience that, when applied to the dance behind closed doors... Wow. <laughs> wow. Provided what it perhaps was the most gratifying seven minutes of Delilah's <laughs> life. I love that they fucking nailed it with a stopwatch, too. Seven minutes, 13 seconds. Seven minutes in heaven. With death. If a girl could dream, this was it. Her moans filled the room now, bouncing off the walls and back to her ears. Thanks for the rudimentary auditory uh, uh, physics lesson. Back to hers once again before another was released as death drove in, pace increasing steadily and with a sense of slight cupidity. What? That's what another that word I don't think is an actual word, but I guess might be. So now is the writer real smart or it's the star is using? Go ahead. Scott. I'm going to guess smarter than most, but not as much as she thinks okay. with a very big thesaurus. Okay, what spell the word would you? Cupidity. Cupid. Itty. Uh, greed for money or possessions. I mean, I guess if so he's possessing her greed. vagina, yeah. yeah. Um, b- b- sorry. I learned two words today? That's offensive. <laughs> I'm, like, disgusted with myself. His hand... Yeah, I'm disgusted by 20 minutes ago, me. His hand meandering over her breast, squeezing and caressing here and there. <laughs> First it's here, then it's there. Meandering? Not <laughs> the best. You know, I don't know where he's having enough time for meandering in seven minutes. <laughs> He's dad, he could dilate, I suppose. The dilate time, not holes. Although he could probably do that too, apparently. With his spirit powers. In a rhythmic fashion, only brought those sounds higher, straining to hold back a scream that would come soon enough. She wanted to shout out his name, wail until the neighbors came banging on the door with noise complaints and angered voices, only to receive a shriek of pure delight in return. If only the high heavens could know the extent of her delirium, the rush in which she felt beyond honored to experience. 
her inner walls contracted around him, back arching as her chest openly presented itself to his darkened eyes, clearly stimulated by the sudden urge to bellow his name to the world in that moment of climax. Death, 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 the only name and word that mattered and swallowed her entire being from the inside out corrupted the mind and soul until there was, indeed, a dent present that would withstand the effects of time and space itself. It was a memoir, so to speak, like the scar one would brag about having gotten when they had done something truly spectacular. And while no one could see this particular memory, she had no intention of letting it sit dormant and without purpose. It wasn't every day that a woman had the chance to be subject to death's hidden talents. Wow. Two paragraphs left. He had continued to pump for a minute. I'm sorry. Minute, I guess, even though it's spelled the same as minute. For a minute period of time following Delilah's extravagant display, his own Fireworks soon <laughs> his own soon following in a far more laid back and casual fashion, <laughs> eyes cl- <laughs> It's all right, I guess. Uh in a far more laid-back and casual fashion, eyes closing slowly before a deep sigh of contentment could be heard leaving his parted lips, she had never expected anything more than the average reaction from him, but the fact that she had brought such a powerful and immense being pleasure was, <laughs> to say it lightly, stunning. It was as though any pent-up anger, frustration, or stress had been thrown from his form and replaced with nothing more than a brief instance of reticence. Whoa. Some regarded silence as a negative thing, believing it acted as wasted space that could be filled with intellectual conversation. However, as she lay there, body still fluttering with mild anticipation of what might come next, while death reclined next to her casually, busying himself with a fountain drink from some hole-in-the-wall restaurant, the silence only made Delilah want more. Oh, death. Which... If you'll remember, I do. was the name of the previous story. So, is there some sort of weird canonical connection between these two? Where that character also read the first four chapters of that story and was like, what the fuck? And needed to write this in its place. Huh. Wow. That's so, crazy. yeah, do you agree with me that that was the most flowery and poetic and I, over uh, the top yes. that any sex has been uh, that we've read thus far? Yes. That was, wow. Yeah. I, man. She really, really wanted to fuck that old guy. Yeah. Like a lot, yeah. I guess. I felt it, you know. <laughs> the old guy. Uh, no, I mean. I, <laughs> man. 